This might be the biggest airdrop in the history of crypto. I mean, almost everyone uses MetaMask. But we don't think everyone is going to get a fair, equal amount. Honestly, what's going to happen and what's very likely happening is that the people who use the advanced features the most, they are the ones that make the most, which is why you want to learn the top strategies. So what we have done is we got Ron. Hello there. Ron has been researching nonstop on what features on MetaMask that you should be using. But we've also been discussing with other people who use MetaMask and try to figure out and suss out what they will reward users for. So what you want to do is you want to pay attention to all the steps in this video and make sure you follow them to get the most out of the MetaMask airdrop. So over to you, Ron. Let's go. All right, first off, let's talk about strategies. MetaMask at its core is an Ethereum wallet. Almost all of the stuff that we'll have to do today will focus on the Ethereum mainnet. And I'm not gonna lie, that's the downside of this airdrop. You might have to have at least $100 in gas just to do the bare minimum. However, if you optimize your gas management well, you might be able to save quite a few ETH. And the best way to do this is to check blocknative.com. It's an Ethereum gas tracker that shows you how much it costs roughly to conduct a transaction. It also has a heat map that shows the average gas price in the past week. So for me, I live in Hong Kong and gas fees are at their lowest after midnight, which kind of sucks for me because I have to stay up late if I'm really looking to save every penny. But that might be different for you depending on where you live. So you can use this to roughly plan out a schedule so that you can stick to it consistently. Now let's talk about what we can do to qualify for a potential mask airdrop. And for this, it is very crucial that we use the built-in features of MetaMask. You see, over the past two years, MetaMask has been aggressively pushing out these new features. And if they're going to do an airdrop, it makes sense that those who use those features will have better chances, right? Because the mask token is a DAO token. It's confirmed by consensus that it will be used to govern MetaMask. And all DAO token airdrops like Uniswap or more recently Arbitrum, they require you to use the protocol's unique features in order to get the airdrop. So you have to focus on these in-app features. And all of that can be found here in your MetaMask portfolio. So to get there, you'll have to hop onto your Chrome extension, MetaMask, and click on this icon here, and it will take you to your portfolio. Now on the left, you'll see all of the features that MetaMask provides for you. And for the airdrop itself, we will focus on four of these features. Let's start with the buy function. This is basically a fiat on-ramp. So if you have a debit or credit card, you can directly buy crypto here on MetaMask, but that also depends on where you live. Unless you live in these countries, you'll be able to use the on-ramp service. Now, just a heads up, using this is actually more expensive than the normal way, which is to withdraw and transfer funds from centralized exchanges like Bybit or Binance uh, into your MetaMask because there's gonna be a lot of fees involved. 1% of it goes to MetaMask, some percentage of it goes to the third-party on-ramp service, and then the rest of them goes to the gas fees depending on which network you use. And because we're using Ethereum, that's gonna be the most expensive choice. So the trick here is to buy the tokens that have the least amount of fees because there are many options that you can buy. And because this is the MetaMask airdrop, right? We're focusing on Ethereum. We will choose Ethereum. So in this list of tokens, I've grouped them into three main categories, ranking by the cost of their fees. So the first one is ETH, Ethereum itself. This is actually the cheapest option out of all of them. The best quote that you can get for ETH usually charges you at 10% fee. So if I were to put 300 Hong Kong dollars, I would get $274 worth of ETH. So 10% of it goes to fees and I get to keep 90% of what I paid for. The second category is stable coins such as USDT and USDC. These are the second cheapest option. The best quote that you can get for these usually charges you at a 15% fee. 
And the third and last category is every other project tokens, whether they be DeFi or meme tokens or GameFi tokens. The best quote that you can get for those charges you at a 20% fee. So honestly, if you're really looking to save on fees, just go for ETH. Now, the last thing you'll need to do to complete that transaction is you'll have to sign up for an account with that fiat on-ramp service. So you'll just have to register with your email and then once you've continued, enter the details of your credit card and debit card and confirm your transactions. All right, on to the next feature, which is the swap function. So this is actually the cheapest option out of the four features. And honestly, I don't mind using this on a regular basis, even though I know that there are cheaper alternatives. Take Uniswap, for example. You're paying a 0.3% fee for swapping tokens, and the fee goes to liquidity providers. But for MetaMask, it's a little bit different. Their fee is a little bit higher, 0.875%, but that's because it's a service fee, not a liquidity provider fee, because MetaMask is the one providing prices from multiple aggregators, uh, market makers, and other DEXs, as opposed to Uniswap, where it's permissionless. So whoever can provide liquidity, they get to earn fees. That's how they're incentivized to do so. But for MetaMask, they have to make money somehow. That's why their fees is a little bit higher. But honestly, it's not a big of a difference, especially for the airdrop, it's very worth it. Now, because we're gonna be focusing on Ethereum, keep in mind that gas fees are gonna be high. You can also swap tokens in these chains if you have funds on those wallets. Yes, they are cheaper, but because I feel like MetaMask will focus on Ethereum more than the other chains, so it's best if we do some activities here at least. Now, if I'm gonna pointlessly swap tokens every week, then I want to minimize as much cost as possible. So the best play that I'm using is to swap between stable coins because they have the lowest slippage tolerance. Slippage is basically the price difference between the time you confirm your transaction and when the tokens appear in your wallet. So for MetaMask, 1% is the lowest that you can put for slippage tolerance. Now, even though you might see this sign pop up, for stable coins, you can get away with 1% slippage because they're roughly pegged to $1. So it's unlikely that their value will change more than 1% during your transaction, theoretically speaking. Moreover, stablecoin transactions are inherently faster than other types of tokens. This is good because we want finality as fast as possible because there's a chance that your transaction might not go through, especially when the network is congested. So if we're gonna be rinse and repeating our swaps for the sake of qualifying for the airdrop, this is the most cost-effective way that I'm using right now. All right, on to the next feature, which is the bridge function. So this is not exactly a native bridge, it is a bridge aggregator. So what it does is it finds the cheapest and fastest bridge available at the moment for you to use. Now using this will be a little bit more expensive than just using it directly on another bridge because you will need to pay yet again another 0.875% uh, fee uh, as part of their service. So which chains do we want to bridge to? We highly recommend bridging to Optimism and Arbitrum because these two are layer twos on top of Ethereum and it uses ETH as gas fees. So for convenience sake, without wrapping any other tokens, this is the most cost-effective way. It's just gonna be transferring ETH to ETH. And then you can do it vice versa, say from Arbitrum back to Ethereum. That's all you have to do for the bridging process. And last but not least, you can stake your ETH on MetaMask through either one of these staking providers. So Lido and Rocket Pool are liquid staking protocols. So these are the best DeFi apps in terms of risk reward ratio, because not only you are earning yields from staking ETH, but you will also receive ST ETH tokens, which you can use across many different DeFi platforms to earn more yields. 
That's why it's called liquid staking. So between the two, we recommend Lido because it's much more flexible for everyday users, whereas Rocket Pool is more catered towards validators because it's required to have eight ETH in order to stake in Rocket Pool. So all in all, try to use those four features at least once a week, or if you really don't have enough ETH for gas, once every two weeks is also fine as long as you're consistent throughout the following months. As an added bonus, if you've also been interacting with the top Ethereum dApps with your MetaMask wallet, there's also a good chance that you can qualify for the airdrop. And that is pretty much it for today's video. I hope you guys find it very helpful. If you want more information, we covered it step by step in our box mining article. And if you're interested in other airdrops, we have an entire playlist dedicated just for airdrops. And we want to thank Bybit for sponsoring this video. If you haven't signed up with Bybit already, do us a favor, use our link down below. It's completely free and you get to earn up to $30,000 in deposit rewards. Thank you very much for watching, guys. My name is Airdrop Ron, shining out.